Well, in this demonstration lesson, we're going to talk about some of these concepts of sandboxing and next generation firewalls, as well as web application filtering and do a web safari up to one of the leading WAFs out there and then take a look at my Palo Alto PA500 wildfire analysis feature. Sound good? Let's dive in. We're going to talk first about application sandboxing and basically this is limiting the parts of the files or operating system that the application is allowed to interact with. It prevents code from making permanent changes to data or the operating system kernel on the host machine. Application sandboxing is also called application containerization. And this is done quite a bit with virtual environments like VMware, for example. But doing your own private cloud with virtualization does have some limitations. And sometimes, for example, at Brio, we're going to look to some third-party vendors who provide this application sandboxing feature because it's a lot more robust. However, if our customer is dealing with PHI, personal health information, or other kinds of information, and they just simply cannot use a public or hybrid cloud, then we have to consider a private cloud solution. It's also an approach to software development and mobile application management, MAM, that limits the environments in which certain code can execute. Here we can see a diagram of sandboxing. Without an application sandbox, all the user data and all system resources on the left-hand side have unrestricted access to your app. With an application sandbox, your app is placed in the sandbox and certain processes have unrestricted access to your app, but only if allowed in the sandbox environment. Other user data, other system resources have no access to the sandboxed application. And this is a very important feature when you're analyzing malware or zero day threats that have just shown up. You don't want them to be exposed in the wild throughout your enterprise organization. You can use a tool like Sandboxy, which is basically Sandbox IE. It uses isolation technology to separate programs from your underlying operating system. You can prevent unwanted changes from happening to your personal data, applications, programs that are on your hard drive. For instance, you could secure your favorite web browser, block malicious software, viruses, ransomware, and zero days by isolating these in the sandbox. If you run your favorite email program in Sandboxy, you don't have to worry about suspicious attachments or spear phishing attacks. Here we can see the Sandboxy website. This was actually developed by Sophos, which is uh, one of the antivirus tools that I use. And you can sandbox your web browser, your email, your data. Uh, you can use it for application testing, and it supports a lot of different platforms. And it's been recommended by a lot of companies. You can get a home version of Sandboxy, or you can get it for commercial use. Turbo.net also has a browser sandbox service. Here we can see their website. Uh, there's a number of commercial appliances also that provide application sandbox environments. As a matter of fact, let's go take a look at my Palo Alto PA500 with its wildfire analysis sandboxing feature. Okay, I'm over on my Palo Alto next generation firewall. Uh, my PA500, and the Palo Alto NGFW is tightly integrated with Palo Alto's next generation wildfire cloud-based malware sandbox service. And as we're going to see in a moment, it supports both public cloud deployments, where I'm going to leverage Palo Alto's cloud-based service, and I can also support private cloud. By going with the cloud architecture, I'm going to simplify my management. I'm going to get more scalability. I'm also going to automate a lot of the things that go along with threat intelligence. So to get to the wildfire, first of all, I'm going to go to objects. Now, ultimately, this will be part of a policy, part of a security policy. But the first thing I have to do is go to the objects area here and go down to wildfire analysis. And I already have under wildfire analysis a default predefined any application, any file type, public cloud-based analysis. And to get additional near real-time analysis, like within minutes from Palo Alto, I have to subscribe to an advanced wildfire analysis service. However, even out of the box, I still do get wildfire support from the cloud. It's just not nearly as proactive and effective. So I wanna go down to the ad here 
and I can just name this. We'll just say this is a test profile for wildfire analysis. And then I will click on the add button here and under applications, it said right now I'm doing any application, any file type, but I can create analysis for granular applications. It's going to load all these up. We can see some of these right now. And there's a lot of them when they're upgraded, like for example, Adobe Cloud and Adobe Connect, which I use by the way. Now there's a prioritization feature that you can get from Wildfire called Autofocus. And this is the subscription that I was talking about. So instead of just seeing that we have a malicious event, we'll know immediately from the cloud, the context of the attack or the campaign or the malicious agent that's targeting the organization. And so autofocus alerts our security operations center, SOC, or our security team about high priority events. So autofocus is gonna give us this, it's gonna be part of the wildfire service. It's also got what's called the PanDB, which is their URL filtering service. Like you've heard of WebSense or Smart Filter. Palo Alto's is called Pan-DB. Also has a, what's called a mind meld application. So you can aggregate and correlate these third-party threats. It also integrates with their endpoint protection called Traps. It also integrates with their Aperture software as a service, their version of a cloud access security broker, their Caspi. They also have a threat intelligence and research team called Unit 42, and it also connects with other partners as well. So by spending the extra money to go with autofocus here at Brio, we can get more out of our wildfire tool and our next generation firewall. And as I move down here, we can see Amazon Cloud, a, a whole list of applications. So I can get much more granular. For example, Dropbox would be a good one. Uh, Dropbox base, Dropbox download, uploading. That's one that definitely, you know, causes problems in the enterprise. You know, Flickr. So I can see a whole wide variety of applications. Besides just saying any, I can create profiles. Also, you can see the file types that are supported. So we can analyze APK files, email links, flash files, JAR files, uh, Mac OS X files, MS Office, PDF, and PE executables. Now this list actually may be in newer versions of this operating system. I think I'm running 8.0 something. That isn't the newest operating system. And then of course, as I mentioned, we can do public cloud analysis, which is the default, or we can create our own private cloud solution. And you may need to do a private cloud solution if, for example, your business sector or the type of industry you're in just doesn't allow you to have customer information, healthcare information, PII, personally identifiable information or personal health information or financial records going up to a public cloud. And so we can have our own, you know, VMware, vSphere deployment and use our own private cloud to create our own enterprise wildfire analysis across all of our Palo Alto next generation firewalls. Next, I want to talk about secure encrypted enclaves. It was introduced in Apple's A7 system on a chip as a separate CPU responsible for low-level cryptographic operations. If you remember last year, and this is 2017, this is the fall of 2017. So about a year ago, there was that story where the FBI was trying to force Apple to unlock a suspect's iPhone. And the iPhone in question was actually an older one, an iPhone 5C. Newer phones have what Apple calls the secure enclave which should protect against those types of requests. So even if Apple wanted to break into your phone, they couldn't. The secure enclave was introduced, so all iPhones starting with the 5S have it. On the iPad side, everything from iPad Mini 2 and the iPad Air, which I also have one of those, that has it as well. It runs a modified L4 microkernel instead of the iOS, and it uses a secure boot system to ensure that the code it runs can't be modified. It also uses encrypted memory, to make sure that the rest of the system cannot read or tamper with the data. Basically, it's forming a little computer within a computer that's extremely difficult to attack. The Secure Enclave has its own UID and hardware AES engine. The passcode verification process happens in the Secure Enclave, so it's separate from the rest of the system. Secure Enclave also handles the Touch ID fingerprint processing and matching, and it authorizes your payments for Apple Pay. Something else you'll want to know on the exam is DAM, 
database activity monitoring. And this is basically appliance, like an IPS sensor, for example, that monitors all your database activity. I actually talked about this in lesson 5.2. And it kind of reminds me of how when you kind of go through all the objectives of the CASP, they are not perfectly organized. So that was kind of a challenge for me. So you'll notice that sometimes as we go through this training, I'll repeat topics. Okay, here's one of those places. So the dam is going to monitor all the activity, provide alerts and reports, and it's great for auditing privileged internal database admins and users, people that have privileged roles. For example, if an admin doesn't log in, that can be reported as well. And you can also identify people who have permissions who aren't using them so you can improve your least privilege principle. Now, one of the crucial things is the data, we'll call it the metadata about the database is actually not stored on the database that it's monitoring. Okay, so it's transparent and it's tamper resistant. Another crucial element is it can send real-time alerts so that as soon as there's a violation of your database policy or your data leakage or your data loss prevention policy, it'll initiate an incident. And you can have your incident response team can come in, your early responders. Now remember, database activity monitoring is reactive. It's not inline prevention, but it is necessary to be compliant with regulations like Sarbanes-Oxley, PCI DSS, HIPAA, and others. Next, we're talking about WAF, Web Application Firewalls. And here we see actually the Cisco Web Security Appliance, the WSA. This is also the same thing you would see in Cisco's Cloud Web Services. There's a bunch of WAFs out there. OWASP, for example, is an application firewall for HTTP, and it applies a bunch of rules to the HTTP conversation, which is TCP-based. And it'll cover common attacks like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and others. Proxies protect clients, but a WAF is going to protect the server. It's deployed to protect a specific web application or a set of applications. So it could be considered a reverse proxy. You really should consider the WASC OWASP Web Application Firewall Evaluation Criteria Project. What I want to do now is go up and take a look at one of the best of breed WAFs according to Gartner. And that would be from Fortinet, their FortiWeb product. Okay, here we are at the WAF from Fortinet. It's the NSS Labs recommended WAF, protecting up to 20 gigabits per second. You can get it in an appliance or a virtual machine, or it's cloud-based as well. You can also go up here and look at FortiWeb and the OWASP top 10. So that's an important synergy there. In addition to stopping sophisticated threats and countermeasuring malicious sources and, and denial of service attacks, it also has layer seven load balancing and an accelerated SSL engine. Here you can kind of see their solutions, application solutions, partner APIs, access control, client control, advanced threat intelligent, network or security operations center and cloud. And it just shows you down here a variety of different features and the different appliances they have. So you can get a standalone appliance and there's quite a few vendors out there that have standalone appliances. Cisco has a standalone appliance. Palo Alto Networks has another appliance that's separate from their next generation firewall that you can get that actually works with their wildfire analysis and aperture and other features. They also have virtual appliances you can install in VMware. And of course they have a cloud solution. Their cloud solutions work with Amazon Web Services and with Microsoft Azure. All right, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration.